We've been together six months on the road and here. And we've not done anything you'll have to lie about to Tonya. It'd be a lot better if the Ministry wasn't sending Dementors into my pub every other night. Same actress. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and for more Oscar movie reviews, today our movie in the middle is Dr. Zhivago. Dr. Zhivago stars Omar Sharif, Julie Christie, Rod Steiger, Geraldine Chaplin, and Alec Guinness. Set in the backdrop of the Russian Revolution, the story follows Dr. Yuri Zhivago as he both plays his part in the revolution and also deals with the longing of an old flame who he met before he was married. And all of this actually is a story that's being told in the context of somebody, Alec Guinness, uh, an officer who is trying to find out who this girl is. I don't think we ever really understand why, but he's trying to figure out who this girl is, and he thinks that she might be the long-lost daughter of Dr. Zhivago. This is one of those epic movies, like three and a half hours, two parts, there's an intermission. It's like a huge movie. If, if you watched one of my other movie suggestion days, I think I had mentioned something about Dr. Zhivago being like the chili gone with the wind. And it really is. I mean, even in how each of the acts are set up and what they're, you know, surrounding, the first part being more about the actual revolution and the war, the, the, the context of everything going on around them as Dr. Zhivago and Lara who he falls in love with kind of meet and then you know their lives get separated and then the second half is more intimate about their relationship about the affairs that they go through and that sort of mirrors gone with the wind in a way except it's just set in russia and not america this movie has incredible filmmaking it's just like i said it's an epic and every shot shows it whether it's the big shots where it's like huge, like trains and snow and, you know, huge war going on and everything, or it's the little moments and there's like shadows and, and you know, really intimate moments. And I, no matter what it is, it's just one of those you look at it and you're like, wow, yeah, that's that's like one of those epic masterpiece movies, you know? The, the filmmaking is just so beautiful. Film itself is, I think, richer than what like the digital age that we have today and that's something i can get into on a whole other video that i would like to at some point it's just it just comes across so beautifully on in in this movie just ev everything specifically the ice house or ice palace whatever you want to call it i want to say it takes up maybe like a quarter of the movie where they're just on the run and they are in this house that is just completely frozen over i mean everything i mean i mean there's not a room in which it's actually dry and warm they set a fire but the whole thing is actually frozen and they're sitting there in like hats and gloves and everything it, and it's just gorgeous the whole the whole location everything that they did is just magnificent looking it's insane i mean th this is definitely a winter movie if there ever was one some of the characters as well are very interesting. Specifically, I think Pasha is the most interesting character. He is kind of like the Rolf from Sound of Music to, to this movie. He originally is Laura's boyfriend, I think fiance at, at a time. And then he becomes, um, well, he becomes a dick. He starts off as a nice guy. Then he kind of turns because he's very interested in being awarded feeling accomplished. That's the kind of uh, love that he wants from Lara. He, he wants the, the admiration. So he joins the Russian army. It's very scary the, what he turns into. And actually, I think that is the kind of cliffhanger that they leave you on the first act is that he's on the back of this train and you see that he's become very important in this army and therefore very influential. And Lara and, and even Dr. Zhivago's you know, fates can be left up to him. But my absolute favorite part of this movie is the theme. I might have already talked about this before and I don't want to get too into it right now because I do want to save it for when I start to do my score of the week. But I have to talk about it a little bit. I love this score so much. 
when I think of this score, when I listen to it, I just think of snow and a snowy day. And it's, or you could think of flowers. I don't know. It's kind of both, but it is so beautiful. Maybe I can't talk about it that much because um, there's really not much else to say just to listen to it. But it's just so beautiful. And it's got all these like this, 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 this going on, you know, with the music and and it's got all the different instruments. And it's um, I mean, it's I, 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 what is what is that instrument? I just looked it up. It's called the Bala Laika Laika. It's like a guitar, okay? It's basically like a, like a sort of ukulele looking thing. That is, I think, the primary instrument in this theme. And my God, it's just so beautiful. The thing about this movie is while it's technically very epic and incredibly well filmed, the story itself is okay. The second half loses it for me because the first half is very interesting. And while the second half can be very emotional, it honestly goes on too long and they didn't know what to do with it. The second half honestly is just Dr. Zhivago doing the same thing over and over. It really is. Like he finds Lara again and obviously now he's married, but he's like, should I go with Lara? Should I stay with my wife? I'm not really sure what to do. So he kind of does both and he just does it for like 30 minutes. I'm, I'm not kidding. There is a moment like a, like a part of this film where for like three or four scenes, he just goes back and forth between the two houses. He'll be with his wife. He'll run outside. They'll play the, the theme. He'll look at a flower. He'll look at the sun. And then he'll go see Lara. And then he'll come back. And then he does the same thing. And the movie does the same thing. He looks at the flower. He looks at the sun. We, we hear Lara's theme. He goes to the apartment. He comes back. They see a flower. They see the sun. The theme comes. It's the same thing for like 30 minutes. And the worst crime is that it almost ruins the theme. They almost overplay it. And the other aspect of that is that I don't really like Dr. Zhivago. Like him, like Yuri. He's okay, but he's not really that interesting of a character. And he's kind of a, a I don't know, he's just kind of a weenie. He's not that interesting. I don't really care that he's having this problem. And he's not really even that great of a guy. Like, he's he's a good guy, but he's having this affair, and he doesn't really do much to warrant, like, I really want to work for this guy. Like, he does his job. He's a doctor, so he does a lot of, like, saving people, which obviously is very good. But besides that, I don't know. I don't know. There's one part at the end where he does something that's sort of like a, a good sacrifice. And there is a part when he kind of, like, walks like treks back through the snow like for days to get back to Lara I think or maybe it's his wife I don't know it, there's like a like a love hexagon going on or something like that but other than that he's just kind of there he's okay so Dr. Zhivago is a very technically well done movie very well done movie it is beautiful to look at. One of the most beautiful films ever made. It is really cool in terms of some of its characters and their dynamics with each other and their interactions. And it's got one of the best themes of all time. But the problem is, story-wise, it just loses me. It just, it repeats itself a lot. It's too long. The main character that I'm supposed to be rooting for is okay. But it still is an epic piece of filmmaking. And... The story does hold up well enough, considering that there's a ton of other stuff going on with the revolution and all these other characters and a lot of stuff happening at once, that it is still very worth watching, even if you only watch it once. I'm going to give Dr. Zhivago a three out of four. I'll be honest, I still found this more interesting than Gone with the Wind. What the hell did you just say? I know, I know. I'm a filmmaker and I'm, I'm a, a film critic all this other stuff that has to do with movies and i thought gone with the wind was okay guys let me know what your thoughts were on dr Zhivago. if you liked it hated it at least tell me that you please loved loved the cinematography and stick around i've got some more oscar reviews coming up mostly the ones for the movies that are nominated this year i'm probably only going to be putting out one video this week this one because I think I have a throat infection. Woo! 
Then starting next week, or possibly right at the tail end of this week, I'm going to be doing a review for Minari, Promising Young Woman, and The Father, so we can get those taken care of before the Oscars actually happen. And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and movies right in the middle. I'll see you guys later.